Hello, and welcome to a tutorial on how to debug your Scala projects using the IntelliJ IDE. Before we get started, you're going to want to make sure that you have the IDE installed on your machine. If you need any help with that process, you can follow a tutorial which we have written on medium.com. I'll post the link in the description. Without further ado, let's get started. First and foremost, we fire up the IntelliJ IDE and load up one of our Scala projects we have ready. Once SBT finishes setting up the project structure, we're ready to get started. Allow me to begin by introducing the concept of breakpoints. Breakpoints allow you to examine a program at a specific point during its execution, down to a specific line of code. In the case of IntelliJ, breakpoints are specified by placing markers on specific lines. To insert a breakpoint, simply click in the left gutter of the editor on any desired lines, just to the right of the line number. If no breakpoint exists on that line, then clicking will create a new one. If one already exists, then clicking will remove it. Note that you can add as many breakpoints as you want, so long as a piece of code exists on that line. Let's add a breakpoint here. Now we want to test it out. In order to do so, we must run our program in debug mode. There are many ways to do this from the IDE, and the main ones are to either click the spider icon on the top right, or from the menu bar, select run and debug your program. Once the program compiles and executes, the debug pane will automatically appear at the bottom of the IDE. The debug pane contains a variety of useful information and tools for your debugging needs. Let's start by examining the stepping toolbar, located at the top of the debug pane. From left to right, we have Show Execution Point, which, as the name implies, shows the current program execution point. We have Step Over, which steps to the next line in the current file, Step Into, which steps into the next line to be executed, force step into, which is the same as step into, but ignores stepping filters for libraries, constructors, etc. Step out, which, while in a method, steps to the first line executed after returning from the method, remove frame, which moves the execution point back to the method called dropping current frames from the stack. We have run to cursor, which runs your program until the line which your caret is located, and finally, we have Evaluate Expression, which is used to evaluate arbitrary expressions, usually those encountered during your program's execution. Now let's look at some of the other panes within the debug pane. First is the Frames pane, which allows you to examine all the threads of your Scala application, and even allows you to customize how your application is threaded. Simply select the thread from the drop-down menu to examine it. Examining a thread allows you to view its stack frame, examine frames and their stored values, navigate between frames, and jump to a frame source code. Then we have the variables pane, which displays all active variables of the current stack frame. Selecting a particular stack frame from the frames pane allows you to view all the active variables within that scope, as well as their stored values. Now let's put everything that we've learned so far to the test. Remember that we can add or remove breakpoints by clicking in the left gutter of the editor next to a line number. To trigger breakpoints during a program's execution, we have to run it in debug mode, after which the debug pane opens. In the stepping toolbar, we have various options on how to advance the execution of a program in debug mode. Let's try selecting the step into option to see how we can advance our program line by line. Notice that as we move to the program line by line, our frames and our variables are constantly being updated. The frames pane lets us examine a thread from the drop-down menu, and within each thread, we can view its stack frames and frames in which we can view each of the active variables in the corresponding scope. And finally, the variables pane gives the information of each variable in that stack frame's scope. Now let's talk about the different kinds of breakpoints and how to configure them. Line breakpoints are set on executable lines of code, including simple expressions and lambda expressions. For example, the print line statement. Method breakpoints are placed at method declarations and trigger when entering or exiting a method. This allows you to check conditions related to method entry or exit. Here we have a definition for a simple for loop. A breakpoint here is considered a method breakpoint. Finally, we have exception breakpoints, which trigger when a specific exception is thrown. Earlier, I told you that you set breakpoints by clicking a line number. 
However, for exception breakpoints, this is not true. To set an exception breakpoint, first we must navigate to the breakpoints dialog from the menu bar. Click run, and at the very bottom hit view breakpoints. This will open a breakpoints window. Here, in the top left, click the plus above the left pane, and select Java exception breakpoints. This opens the enter exception class window, where we can search for a desired exception. We will look for the array index out of bounds exception from the Java language. Note that among exceptions specific to Scala, you can also find a plethora of Java supported exceptions. When you find the desired exception, hit OK. The exception should automatically be added to your list of exception breakpoints, as well as be enabled by default. Now, let's go over how to configure a breakpoint settings. Editing these properties is as easy as right clicking a breakpoint marker. In the resulting context window, click the more option to list all possible configurations for that breakpoint. The settings are located in the breakpoints window, the same window in which we added our exception breakpoint. Furthermore, notice that all the breakpoints we currently have in our program are listed on the left hand side. Immediately, we see that there are a handful of options to customize our breakpoints. Let's go over a few of these options to see how they function. The enable option is used to disable a breakpoint, in case you want the breakpoint to remain but not trigger. This is a useful option for remembering a debug case later on. Notice that this option can also be toggled from the left hand side. Let's let our breakpoint on line 24 to be the only enabled one for now. As we have seen, a program running in debug mode will suspend upon hitting a breakpoint by default. The suspend option is used to toggle that feature on and off. In other words, if the suspend feature is toggled off for a particular breakpoint, then your program will continue to execute right past it. By far one of the more interesting options is the condition setting. The condition setting triggers a breakpoint whenever a specified condition is met. Let me give you an example. Earlier, I mentioned the for loop function that I have written here. It loops from 1 to a passed in number, which is an integer. In this case, we pass in the integer 5. So our for loop would loop from 1 to 5, a total of 5 loops. Now let's insert a breakpoint inside our for loop and give it a condition. Say we want our breakpoint to trigger on the third loop. So then our condition would be to check when our loop variable is equal to 3. Now when we debug our program, we can confirm in the variables pane that our breakpoint indeed triggers on the third loop. We can also check the console to confirm that this is true. Let's remove our breakpoint and go back to the breakpoints window. The log option simply logs messages to the console upon hitting a breakpoint. You can choose to just display a simple message, or a stack trace, or both. The evaluate and log option evaluates an expression and logs the result to the console. The expression can be completely arbitrary, such as 5 plus 5, or it could be something from your actual program. Remove once hit does exactly what it says. Once a breakpoint is hit, it will be removed. Disable until breakpoint is hit is a little different though. The current breakpoint that is selected will remain disabled until another specified breakpoint is hit, triggering the current one. In the drop down menu, we see that all the breakpoints currently in our program are selectable. After this breakpoint is hit, you can choose whether or not to leave it enabled. Instance filters can be used to limit breakpoint hits with particular object instances. Class filters filters out classes where exceptions will be caught. Pass count is used to trigger a breakpoint after being hit a specified number of times. Caller filters are used to trigger a breakpoint after being called or not called from a particular method. And that about wraps it up for breakpoint properties. These are only some of the options, and more might be available to you depending on the type of breakpoint being configured. For more information on breakpoints, I'll leave a link in the description to the official documentation on the JetBrains website. I'd like to cover one last thing today, and those are watches. You may have noticed a particular looking variable in the variables pane with a glasses icon. These are known as watches. A watch can be created for variables or expressions to spectate their evaluation throughout the context of a particular frame. By default, watches are viewed through the variables pane, denoted by the glasses icon. Though you can separate watches into their own pane, the watches pane, by clicking the glasses icon here in the variables pane.
this might make them a little easier to differentiate. Notice that we still have a variable with the glasses icon in the variables pane. As your program runs and variables are declared, corresponding watches are automatically added to the variables pane by default, and are displayed only while the program is in the scope of the respective stack frame. Manually creating watches allow you to track the evaluation of expressions outside of that scope. This tracking can even persist throughout various debugging sessions. As a final note, understand that scope is very important when working with watches. Always consider the current stack frame being examined when working with your watches. For more information about watches, please check the description for the official documentation. And that about wraps it up for our introduction on how to debug Scala projects in IntelliJ IDE. If you're still watching, my hopes are that this guide was able to help you get started on how to debug your Scala projects. If you're interested in learning more about the Scala language, or how to use the IntelliJ IDE to improve your productivity in Scala, consider following us on medium.com. I'll leave the link in the description. Thank you, and have a good one.